temperate forest grows in regions that have a wide range of climates. In some, winters are cold and summers are cool, in others, the winter is relatively mild, and the summer heat rivals that in the tropics where winters are cold, temperate forest trees are usually deciduous, shedding their leaves in winter and growing a new set in spring. In warmer regions, many trees keep their leaves all year. Although temperate forest does not have as many animal species as tropical forest, they are still among the richest wildlife habitats on land. In the depths of winter, deciduous forest can seem gaunt and empty, and largely devoid of animal life. But as the days lengthen in spring, and buds begin to burst, the habitat becomes alive with birdsong and animals on the move. This transformation is triggered by a sudden abundance of plant food one that nourishes large numbers of plant-eating insects as well as the animals that feed on them. Many of these forest animals are permanent residents, but they also include migratory birds that fly in from distant parts of the world. Compared with tropical forest, temperate deciduous forest has relatively few tree species. The maximum number, found in some of the forests of eastern North America, is several hundred, while tropical forest might contain several thousand. Nevertheless, temperate forest trees are powerhouses of life. Large oak trees, for example, can produce over a quarter of a million leaves a year enough to sustain the army of weevils, gall wasps, and moth caterpillars that feed rapidly in spring and early summer while the leaf crop is at its freshest and most nutritious. Like tropical forest, deciduous forest has a clear, vertically layered structure, but there are some important differences. The trees are rarely more than 100 feet, 30 meters, tall, and the canopy layer is usually deep but open, allowing light to reach the understory and encourage plant growth. Fallen leaves rot slowly in cool conditions, so deciduous forest has an unusually deep layer of leaf litter that insects, woodlice, and millipedes use as food and cover. As a result, while many small animals live in the cracks and crevices in bark, the place that is richest in invertebrate life is not the trees but the ground. In warm parts of the temperate world, many broadleaf trees are evergreen. Unlike trees of deciduous forest, which grow in spring and summer, evergreens grow in winter and spring, when temperatures are low but not cold, and when water is readily available. Described by botanists as sclerophyllous, meaning hard-leaved, forest, this habitat is found in several widely scattered regions of the world, including parts of California and western South America, the Mediterranean region in Europe, and large areas of eastern and southwestern Australia. In some of these places, the forest is low-growing, but in Australia, where eucalyptus is the dominant species, it includes the tallest broadleaf trees in the world. Since temperate evergreen trees usually have open crowns, the vertical layers are usually less pronounced than they are in forests in cooler regions, and plenty of light is able to reach the forest floor. As a result, these forests are rich in ground-based wildlife, and warmth-loving animals such as lizards and butterflies, which are usually associated with higher levels, can often be seen sunbathing on the floor. The open structure also makes it easy for birds, such as kookaburras and other forest kingfishers, rollers, and hoopoos, to swoop down on animals moving around on the ground. The air in evergreen forest often smells pleasantly aromatic because most of the leaves are filled with pungent oils. These oils help stop the leaves from drying out, and they also protect them from animals. They are a highly effective deterrent, for relatively few animals, except for specialists such as the koala, include these leaves in their diet. The factor that most affects life in temperate forest is the variable food supply. At all levels, from the treetops to the forest floor, the life cycles of forest animals living in temperate forest move in step with the seasons so that they produce their young when food is easiest to find. Life is relatively easy in spring and summer, but in winter, when the food supply is at its lowest, special adaptations are needed for survival. As a habitat, deciduous temperate forest the kind of forest found across much of the northern hemisphere, have one very useful feature in common. The trees that grow in them, such as oaks and beeches, produce leaves that are designed to last for just one growing season. As a result, these leaves are usually thin and easy to eat, which is why vast numbers of insects feast on them as soon as they begin to appear in spring. This sudden explosion of insect life attracts an army of highly specialized avian predators. In Europe, Northern Asia, and North America, dozens of warbler species migrate north as the buds open. These birds have extremely acute eyesight, enabling them to scour leaves for the tiniest grubs and caterpillars, which they then pick up with their tweezer-like bills. Other birds, including tree creepers, woodpeckers, and nuthatches, concentrate on the bark, seeking out and pecking at the tiny animals hidden among the crevices. By midsummer, leaves stop growing, and animal feeding behavior changes. Most temperate trees are pollinated by wind, and do not need to produce enticing nectar-rich flowers. However, 
They do produce large crops of nuts and other seeds, which are extremely important foods for animals because, unlike leaves, they can be stored away and used when other food is scarce. Food storage, or caching, is practiced by many forest birds and mammals. Jays bury acorns in the ground, while acorn woodpeckers store them in trees. Squirrels bury seeds of all kinds, and red foxes bury anything that is even remotely edible, from half-eaten remains to food wrappers and discarded shoes. Some animals locate their reserves by scent, but most can pinpoint them by memory alone, finding and digging up their food even when it is covered by snow. Seed caching has an important impact on forest ecology. Although animals that bury seeds have good memories, some of what they hide is always forgotten about. This means that provided the seeds are not discovered by rodents or other animals, they remain effectively planted and ready to germinate, helping the forest trees to reproduce. In autumn, many insect-eating birds migrate to warmer climates, leaving the forest's remaining animals to face the winter cold. Animals that store food can remain active throughout this difficult time of year, but others use a very different survival strategy. They hibernate, living on the fat reserves they have built up during the summer months. How long and how deeply an animal hibernates depends on where it lives. In the forests of Northwest Europe, hedgehogs may hibernate for up to six months, whereas farther south their winter sleep is much shorter. In Eastern North America, woodchucks, or groundhogs, typically hibernate from October to February, their wanderings early in the year are a traditional sign that spring is not far off. Some hibernating animals, such as the common dormouse, hardly ever interrupt their winter break, even if they are picked up. However, many hibernators behave in a different way. If the weather turns warm, they briefly rouse themselves. Bats, for example, take to the air for feeding flights, while hedgehogs often move out of one hibernation nest and into another. But forest hibernators have to be careful not to do this too often. Activity uses up their bodily food reserves, and it therefore puts them at risk of running out before the winter is truly over. Many insects also hibernate, often hidden under bark, but, in some species, the adults die out, leaving behind tough, overwintering eggs that will hatch in spring. 